the Big Ten media rights deal finally got announced. And wow, did the eye josh blow up. From people I never even knew cared. Not about me, but about media rights deals. So here's what happened. I'm not going to take time to really break it down because most of it was already public. Seven-year media rights deal agreed to. Big Ten with Fox, with CBS, hooray for us, and with NBC. It looks like member institutions, as a result of this new deal, will be cashing between 80 and $100 million checks per year. I tend to believe it'll be more 100 or a little bit north of 100 when the final total comes in. Here's how the lineup is going to look. Your noon game for the Big Ten will be on Fox. Your 3.30 game will be on CBS. And your primetime game will be on NBC. If that sounds familiar, it's because the NFL has done it forever. And even though I am totally anti-professionalization of college football, from the broadcast perspective, I love that concept. I'm going to talk about that more in a second. Uh, this is not a mystery or news to any of you who watch this show, because I've told you that's where I expected them to go for a while. And I expect that that's not the last time we see that concept. Some key takeaways before I explain to you how that Big Ten versus SEC war is probably just going to escalate now because of a key statement made by Kevin Warren today. Key takeaway number one, how about this? The Big Ten championship game is going to rotate which network it's on. It will be on Fox, and then it'll be on CBS in 2024, and then Fox again in 2025. Then it goes to NBC in 2026, back to Fox, back to CBS in 2028. Jesse, Colin, where will we be working by then? Who knows? I have no clue. And then it goes back to Fox in 2029. Take a look at your screen right now. I'm going to point at it. This is probably, <laughs> Colin had an answer. For legal reasons, I can't repeat it on air. Uh, this is going to be a good screenshot. So let me point to it. Three, two, one. Okay. I think that in the very near future, your college football playoff national championship broadcast model will look like this. It won't be ESPN, ESPN, ESPN. It'll be pretty much everyone getting a cut of that. Now, from a strictly new age media philosophy, I love what Kevin Warren and the Big Ten have done. I love what George Klaikoff and the Pac-12 talk about. They get it. They get it. They may whiff on some other things, but they get how this game is supposed to be played at the negotiating table. For a long time, there were masters on one side and there were suckers on the other side. There were people who had no business negotiating media rights deals who were being taken to the cleaners by the likes of ESPN. I don't blame ESPN. I blame the suckers. Anyway, no more suckers at the table, at least when it comes to negotiating some of this stuff. And what Kevin Warren has, well, what he's displayed in this and what George Klaifkoff and a lot of other newer age thinkers at the table have displayed in how they want the playoff to end up going is they've said, don't let ESPN exclusively negotiate and re-up that thing. Let's take it to the open market and let's handle it just like the Big Ten, just let their media rights deal get handled. We don't need to listen to one entity. Let's listen to everyone. And hey, what if we decide that what the NFL does with the Super Bowl is what we want to do with the national championship game? Who should be able to stop us? Or whomst should be able to stop us? I think that's where they're headed. Very soon. Remember, guys, this does not run. This college football playoff contract doesn't run into the 2030s. 2025. That's when it's up. And if you want to know what most of the meetings in Bristol, Connecticut have pretty much consisted of lately. It's, are we going to go get the Big 12 and the Pac-12? And are we going to be able to secure that college football playoff contract? My hope is no, but it has nothing to do with who I work for. What if I told you, what if I told you that there are employees at that network that have echoed the same sentiment? No one, unless you're an executive, likes any one network having a stranglehold on the college football playoff contract. No one likes that. It's not good for anyone except that network. So it's not good for you. It's not good for me. Uh, and there are some employees there that I speak with fairly regularly who have said, yeah, obviously I can't say this publicly. I kind of hope it gets distributed out too. So um, for obvious reasons, I can't go any further down that rabbit hole. But that is not really what to pay close attention to today. Here, paper pop time. Here's what I didn't want to hear said, but I was afraid I would hear said. 
from Pat Forty on SI.com in writing about this big announcement today. Quote, the agreement comes with this caveat from a Big Ten source. We're not done expanding. So hooray for that. Uh, at this point, I don't care if it's Greg Sankey talking. I don't care if it's Kevin Warren talking. Please don't let anyone try and fleece you into thinking that any further advancement down the expansion road is being done with the best interest of anyone other than themselves in mind. Everyone's fine right now. If you hit the pause button right now, if you let well enough be right now, the Big Ten would be just fine cashing 100 mil per year per institution. Ditto for the SEC. There's only one reason why you push any further for expansion, and it's just because you can. And that's where college football, for a long time, had folks, you got one right here, that tried to protect it from such things, but I've only got the power of this camera and this microphone, and they don't wield nearly as much power as some of these folks who sit in these boardrooms do. This was the natural preserve for a long time that we didn't want disrupted, because every none of us are stupid. We knew if pure market forces ever got into the natural preserve, you were chopping down these trees pretty quick. Our chimpanzees were being taken out stage left really quick. Why? Because we can build a Walgreens here. We can build a high rise here. We can put condos and apartment complexes here. I know you can. Should you? I know you can expand to 20. Should you? Do you care about college football? Do you care about college athletics? Or do you care about the Big Ten? I'm not just directing this at Kevin Warren. Do you care about the SEC or do you care about college football? Where's the balance? How does one benefit the other? The same metaphor that I've been using for a while, I'll go back to one more time. You guys keep talking about doing what's in the best interest of your conference. Kevin Warren keeps using the word disruption like he discovered it two weeks ago. Yeah, you're right about all of it. I simply ask, if you build the biggest mansion in town and the town burns down around you, how much is the mansion worth? College football is the foundation, at least from a football perspective, on which the Big Ten football model is built. It doesn't exist independently, because if you don't have it as the smaller picture in the grander scope of college football, no one cares. It's the same thing for the SEC. Alabama versus Auburn, Georgia versus Florida, that's a big deal within the SEC. What does the SEC exist within? It exists within college football. So what I listened to is I listened for a while to people who told me we need to expand because if we don't, someone else will. And you know what? I was willing to buy that. If we had Greg Sankey on the show and he said, Josh, if I didn't go and get OU in Texas, someone else would. I could believe that. I don't have to be happy about it, but I could believe that. But you're not telling me that past this point. Nor is Kevin Warren and the Big Ten telling me we need to do anything. Now, they don't have to apologize. Sure, they've got all the power in the room. I would just simply suggest, whether you're in the Big Ten, whether you're in the SEC, there is infinite value to college football as a whole being maintained. Everyone right now is caught up in the future of college football. is just going to be one conference versus the other conference. It's going to be the power two, and everyone else is going to fade away. And some people in Birmingham and Indianapolis happen to like the tune of that song. The song sucks. It's terrible. It's Milli Vanilli. You don't want that because you need the foundation of college football for your ever-growing conferences and the value therein to be maintained. It's not hard to figure out, and I know that because I figured it out. So my message, my suggestion to you is figure it out and do it without expanding. Uh, one last thing. The professionalization sometimes is good. You know, there are some aspects of the NFL model that are good. I just told you there's one I like, and that is the broadcast perspective. Uh, that is the philosophy behind how we align with networks. That's fine. That's all well and good. But there's a lot of Sunday logic that's arriving at the Saturday table right now, and I'm not a fan of it at all and you're not a fan of it at all, and there are some others out there who believe they are fans of it until they find out what that's all about. And then you're gonna realize you just poured orange juice in your cereal. I love cereal, I love orange juice. They don't taste good together. The Sunday philosophy applied to our Saturday game is not gonna taste very good. Even though the ingredients on the surface all look like ingredients you approve of. 
be careful what you wish for. There's no going back from this stuff. It may be out of our hands already, but I can assure you, once you go down that road, they call it a slippery slope for a reason. No one ever climbs up a slippery slope. They just, their voice fades further and further into the abyss. Don't go into the abyss, especially when you don't have to.